Howdy folks, Craig and Ray here on the third floor. It's time to talk about the 10 Thunders. Quick disclaimer, Malifaux 3rd Edition was still in open beta when we filmed this, so some of the details may have changed, but overall the themes should remain about the same. We are producing new content about Malifaux on a weekly basis. Make sure you like this video and subscribe, and we can't thank everybody enough who's been leaving comments both on our channel and our Facebook page. Enjoy the video. All right, let's talk about Lucas McCabe. Mm -hmm. uh, you've declared 10 Thunders. I know that uh, you've got Lucas as your as your master. What should I expect to see happen? A bunch of fast minions running okay. around the table. So it, it, definitely it, the first thing you're going to need to worry about. He's going to be a minion-heavy master? I feel like, yes. Um, it's a little bit of a trap. but uh, So what McCabe does is, first of all, flavor-wise, is probably one of the coolest Ten Thunder Masters. Like, every, like, ability and every concept on the keyword, for both for Lucas and for his crew, are just, like, screams, like, oh, these guys are cool. Uh-huh. So, um, their signature key, uh, ability is Looted Supplies. If they start in base contact with a corpse or scrap marker, they get to draw a card. Okay. If the marker stays, they get to draw a card. The other, the signature thing for McCabe is that he can scrounge for relics... And then dole them out to his crew. Interesting. And the relics, when they're attached to a uh, to a minion or a wastrel model, at the beginning of that activation, if they up, if the upgrade was attached that turn, they gain fast. Oh wow! Okay. So he's got a couple of pretty good henchmen under him. So this could potentially be something very very devastating to to have to deal with. And then on top of that, they give other abilities because like reasons. Yeah. And they all get a bonus action to swap the upgrades kind of around with each nice. other. Nice. So if you don't have a reason to use your bonus action, you can just kind of be like, hey buddy, take this. And now that char character, if they get, if that's the first time they've got that upgrade, then they get the fast. They get the fast. That's great. Now something that's obviously very unique about McCabe is that he's really two models, right? Yes. So he, he's a he's a mounted and a dismounted. Can you mm -hmm. kind of walk me through that? So what happens is when uh, you kill McCabe, unfortunately you got his horse. Got it. So he gets a dem demise ability called dismount, and so what happens is that that model gets removed from the table, and you get the McCabe model, which is on, on a smaller base size. And the abilities change slightly. He can still scrounge, still has looted supplies, but like the horse version, the mounted version, he has like the ability to like move through models and he has ability to like, you know, bring models with him. He's ah. moved seven. You know, he's got a net gun that he's able to like use while he's on horseback whipping at people and stuff. And then when he gets dismounted, he changes to a pistol and a sword because now he's really got to mix it up. Now he's hard to kill. Now he has swagger so that when he walks, he gains focus. You know, so it's like he just kind of changes the abilities a little bit, but the flavor's still really there. That's very, very cool. Uh, how about his totem? His totem is his faithful hunting hound, Luna, who is the primary um, enabler for his crew at the start of the game. So because the crew requires corpse and scrap markers, if you don't have an ability to generate those, then you've got to wait until something dies. Right. Well, Luna can dig up corpse markers. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Or a scrap marker. You might be able to dig up both, but only once per turn. Okay. And so that allows you to be able to get the card draw and then also be able to use it to be able to pass out a relic turn one. And nice. then so every turn, Luna can dig up another one. And then uh, you can also use Luna as kind of like a... Uh, um, in War Machines, we call it an arc node, where it's like you can channel through. Okay. And it's uh, you're allowed, you can use her to carry like an, an artifact to somebody. Very so that's cool. kind of really cool. So a lot of flavor. I see what you're saying about the, the theme and the flavor. Yeah, it's just it's a lot of fun to be able to put it on the board. Okay. And just you know play it. So uh, support master, offensive master. Uh, kind of what you want to do with him. He's fast enough that if you want to get him in, he can do some damage. His whip has got a good reach. It's a decent damage track for a master. M for my money, I like him to be a mid-range control piece. Okay. Because his net gun is great. It's a 12-inch gun that is got, uh, it's like a 2 three, 3 blast. So it's a, the damage isn't anything to write home about, but it's not bad. Yeah. Um, but, or it's 2 3 blast, 3 blast. And the important thing about it is that anything that it hits with the with the that it damages gets slow and staggered, and it's a duel versus their move, 
Interesting. Not versus their defense. So it gets past a lot of typical triggers. Yeah. And most models move is a little bit lower than their defense. It's like five defense and five move, you know? Mm -hmm. Like six defense is a little bit more likely to be on a model than six move is. Right. So right. you're looking at a situation where he's able to like, oh, you're a six defense, seven willpower model. I'm going to shoot it with its five move, and now it's, you know, three move because it's staggered. And it's slow. So that's, you get one action. That's interesting. That's interesting. Okay. That's Lucas McCabe. All right, so Lucas McCabe is riding in on the board. I would expect to see some wastrels because that's one of his keywords. Uh, what should I expect when I'm up against a wastrel crew? So the wastrel crew is a very interesting smattering of abilities that kind of starts with the looted supplies concepts and then builds off of that. And that's one of the reasons I really love this crew is because if you're looking for theme, boy, do you get it here. Got it. So two of the models, um, two, is two of his minions, the uh, Huckster and the Ruffian, are both kind of like these, like, almost feel like shady kind of gangster guys that are, like, looking to steal artifacts and then sell them on the black market sure. kind of concept. They're packing gang weapons, which ignore resistance triggers, which is really, really good. Yep. They've got uh, the eponymous uh, uh, looted supplies that they do. Uh, the ruffians get swagger, so when they're moving around, they both have hidden pistols. And, like, you know, they're just, they're kind of like your, your core for a McCabe crew. And they're getting relics. And they're getting relics, which, right. like you, means you're going to get fast and all that jazz. Yeah. And, like, what's really cool about the relics, and I really love this design concept for the relics, is that you get a passive effect. If you're playing the hot potato with your relics, you're getting fast on a bunch of models. But you can choose to either hot potato the relic, or each relic also has a different bonus action that you can take instead. Oh, okay. So, like, so it's a bonus action to pass it off to one of your buddies. Or you can take the bonus action to do an effect. Like, one of them uh, allows you to pulse out shielding. Mm. So, like, maybe you don't want to play Hot Potato with that right. relic because you want to pulse out that shielding. So, it's like, it just gives you some really nice, interesting choices and a little bit of extra kind of flavor to, like, what you're doing with your dudes. Yeah, and by holding it, I'm not passing it, which means, you know, I'm essentially not giving out fast, right? Right. Because that's the other benefit of passing off the relic is right. giving out fast. Very interesting. And an important note about that is that when you start the next turn and that model activates, that model will not gain fast because the relic was not attached that turn. That turn. So you get you only get that fast if the relic has been attached that turn. So uh, activation order seems pretty important. Though. Activation okay. order is very very important. That makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. Um, how about as far as uh, aggression and offensive ability? So aggression wise, you're looking at Sadir Alchabal, which okay. is a great model, fantastic piece. Uh, it's always been a nice, high flavor, kind of mercenary looking kind of dude, like, you know, just kind of r riding around with uh, Lucas. And he maintains that here. His machine gun that he comes strapped with, which is like a Tommy gun for his model, is an amazing weapon. It's a two, three blast, six blast. Oh. And uh, he has swagger, so when he walks, he gains focus. And it's got a couple of really nice triggers on it, including passing out slow, because why not? Yeah. So if you're looking for aggression, you're actually looking at a little bit more ranged aggression there. He's got a sword, too. Um, but, like, you know, really, you're kind of wanting to use that net gun and that machine gun to just kind of lay down some suppressive fire and let the rest of your crew do things. There's not a whole lot of models in the keyword at the moment, so there's a lot of room for bringing versatile models yeah, talk that you can that. like you know bolster your forces with. And I think this is where you make that choice, right? Mm -hmm. So real quick, let me talk about the other uh, the other henchman, Desper. Desper is a uh, complete and utter uh, mobility piece. He feels like a cat burglar. Okay. He's got like expert thief. He's got a grappling hook. He has a built-in leap that you know, as a bonus action. His one of his attacks is stealing soul stones and passing out negative conditions. Like the guy just feels completely like a burglar, right. like a relic hunter. So he's a great amount of flavor there. So if you're looking for a model that's going to do that kind of utility, that's where you're at. Um, when you're, you're looking at the rest of the crew, like the versatile models are where you're going to make the decision of where this goes. So like if you bring a Fuhatsu into, or a Samurai, or maybe even go out of faction bring in snipers type thing, like yeah. you suddenly have a very heavy range crew between the neck gun, machine gun, and those pieces. But you can also go, hey... Like, let's bring in, like, Yasunori, and then between Yasunori and McCabe, we're going to get in your face, and yep. I'm going to pass out a bladed artifact to Yasunori so he ignores armor and incorporeal and all that other jazz. 
No, or actually, I'm sorry, you can't do that to Asinari. It's got to be a minion or a wastrel. Ah, okay, good. That's a key. Yeah. Uh, but you could pass it to Sidir. Right. So it sounds to me like we, we, we probably should expect in future waves maybe to see a couple more wastrels. I imagine we probably yeah. will. Um, it's definitely one of the things I'm really hoping they expand more on because, like I said, the flavor of these guys is just yeah, so, cool. so good. But I guess and it's thematic that they would have mercenary-type versatile models, too. From everywhere, so, yeah. yeah it's cool. like, I love running the Shadow Emissary in this crew. Interesting, okay. Because the Shadow Emissary's got a lot of mobility, and I feel like you can turn this into a really high-mobility crew because Ride With Me, which is one of the abilities that McKay has, he can take Sadir with him. Nice. And then you've got Sadir moving with McKay. Cave. You've got the uh, Desper moving super fast. You have uh, the Shadow Emissary who's got flight. And right. I think he's moved six on top of that. You know, and all three of them have good ranged abilities. You know what I mean? It's yep. like it's like you just there's a lot of mobility suddenly in that crew, and then you can still pass out artifacts to Sadir and Desper, and like bring a couple of ruffians or you know a huckster and a ruffian, and just throw them some gear because if they're fast. It doesn't matter if they're walk five. Yeah, they, right. They get a free walk all of a sudden. Yeah. So it's like, and like one of them has swagger. So it's like triple walking them is not necessarily a bad thing. Sure. Oh, look, I have focus three now and I've got a gun. Yeah, yep. So it seems to me the kind of player that really likes something very thematic, very yeah. fluffy feeling uh, would like it. What else, uh, what other kind of player would like uh, McCabe and a Wastrel crew? Um, I would say if you like ranged crews. Okay. But you like the Ten Thunder aesthetic and the concepts in general, McCabe's probably where you go. Got it. Because let, let's paint the picture here. You've got a relic hunter on a horse, or if you got the Nightmare Edition, you've got this badass on a motorcycle. Yeah. You've got a turban wearing, Tommy gun wielding badass. Yeah. You can take a samurai, armored samurai with a Gatling gun on his shoulder. Yeah. You can take Fuhatsu, which has got another Gatling gun. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you can take a sniper if you want to. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. like you can just be like, here's a wall of machine gun fire and mercenaries that are just coming to take you out. Very, very And cool. that flavor concept's just really, really cool. So, you know, with the passing around of relics and activation order being important, do you think this is uh, a good a good uh, master for a new player, or is this is learning curve pretty, pretty steep? Do. No, okay. I don't think the learning curve is actually pretty steep, because one of the things that McCabe is really great about is either being a second master, or just being a master that you're enjoying a couple of aspects of his keyword, and then kind of fluffing it up with the versatile models that maybe you don't play as often. Like, this is a great time to bring out that lone swordsman with Ride With Me. Right. You know, this is a perfect time to say, hey, you know what? Let's do McCabe, and he found a couple of dragons hiding around, and then you got a Dawn Serpent and a Shadow Emissary. Right. Like, you can kind of let your imagination run a little wild with what you've got. Throw a Terracotta Warrior in there and let it, like, replace a samurai that gets taken out later in the game type mm -hmm. thing. You know, it's like, it really kind of encourages being able to have fun with your crew building, and there's not a heavy, steep curve to the abilities. The hardest thing you're going to need to figure out how to do is hot potato the artifacts, yep. and that's not really that difficult. Very, very cool. Okay, that's Lucas McCabe.